Hello all, welcome to another quick learning. Today I'm going to be showing you a fantasy football simulation that will give you a little idea of a simple uh, Monte Carlo simulation that I set up. So in this spreadsheet, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simulate the rest of a fantasy football season to see uh, what is the probability that different teams are going to be able to make the playoffs. So if you're not familiar with fantasy football, basically you choose players um, from the real NFL teams and then you get points for how many yards and touchdowns and things like that that they score in a game. And usually you do head-to-head -head with other teams to get wins or losses and then the teams with the best records make the playoffs. And then whoever wins the playoffs wins the championship. So first of all, I set up this page um, where I just have the teams. Uh, a user enters in the number of wins, so you would update this each week uh, with the number of wins you have, and also update uh, each week with the number of points scored someone has. So then it just calculates the average point scores for each team, which is the average uh, of each week. And then you can use that to create the projected points by just taking the total points that they scored, which is the sum of these, plus the number of weeks left times the, the weekly average. So that's how that comes out. And then these weekly point totals are then used to simulate each game going forward in the season. So in this league, uh, we've already done 11 weeks. And then we're going to do another two weeks before the playoffs. Uh, so teams have another two weeks in order to increase their wins in order to make the playoffs. And then another uh, important part of this is the tiebreakers because teams with the same record, uh, the tiebreaker is the projected points. So this goes and calculates uh, what the rank of the team is uh, based on the number of points they scored. And then just gives you a number uh, between 0 and 1 that you're going to add to your win total just to uh, allow me to figure out who's winning in the tiebreaker. So you can see this just uses the rank function so it looks at E here, the projected points, um, and it looks at uh, across all the different teams and figures out what's your rank and then we're dividing that by 13. So you can see the ones with the highest points have the highest rank. Uh, that's because I use the order uh, one uh, option. So basically, the, the more points you have, the higher rank you'll have. And I divided it by 13 because I have 12 teams, so I just increased it by one because I don't want it to add more than one to the uh, total of any team. So I'll show you how that works a little bit more when I go over uh, how I project who's going to make the playoffs. But first, let's go to the schedule. So each week, I actually delete a week because it becomes solidified who won. But let's look at week 12 here. So for each team, uh, we've got the schedule that you're going to have to input. Um, so this is who's manning the ship versus HK Hooligans. And then I calculate a percent chance of winning. And how that percent chance of winning comes out, I'll show you in the current settings. So that was who's manning the ship versus HK Hooligans. So who's manning the ship has a weekly uh, projection of 102. And HK Hooligans has a weekly projection of 99. So how I do it is I just take 50% plus the difference between one team's, oh, sorry, let's go ahead and put an equal sign in here, uh, one team minus the other team's weekly projection. So you get, for every point that you're objected to score over your uh, opponent, you get one percentage point over 50%. So you can see, okay, actually this needs to be over 100. So, yeah, so there we got 53% chance between these two teams. 
Uh, for this one, it would be 49, it would be 51 to 49, and so on. So basically, I'm saying that the weekly average points is directly related to how good that team is relative to the other one. Now, if you wanted to be more scientific with it, you could look at past data or other data that you had to see uh, what's the probability of someone winning uh, when one team averages 109 and one averages 106, et cetera. And you could create you know, a distribution based on that and then use that. But just for simplicity, uh, this is what I did. It's just for fun, basically, so it's not too scientific. So that's how we get the percent chance of winning. And then we simulate it out a thousand times. So you can see there's a thousand columns of this. And how you simulate it is I have, so a bunch of, so on this sheet I've got a bunch of RAND functions that are giving me a bunch of random numbers. I've got it out a thousand times and then I've got 78 uh, rows of it. So basically it pulls out, so there's 78 games that could be simulated. Uh, you can see the number over here. And what it does is it uses the index function to look up in simulation, which is this table here. It looks with the match function. So what index does is it you give it a range. So that's basically a two by two table. And then you give it uh, a row number and a column number and it finds that row and column and gives you back the number in that row and column. So here we're giving it uh, this, the 67th uh, row in that range and also when I go up to the top it's referencing this so that's the first column in that range. So for this one that would be, so you'd go down to 67 and it's the first column so it's giving me the 0.64 and then we're comparing that uh, to the chance of winning so if it's less than or equal to the chance of winning then that team is said to win otherwise they lose so it gives it a one otherwise a zero so there's a 53 percent chance that this ran function would return less than 0.53 so that's how we figure out if it's a win or loss. And you can see, you know, here's a win, here's a win. Uh, unlikely though it is, it looks like there's a lot of 0.74s winning, but if we look over the total, uh, so it won about 51% of the simulation, even though it was a 0.53 chance of winning. So the more times you do the simulation, the closer it'll get to an actual 0.53. Um, but for this one, I think a thousand is fine for this simulation. So you do that for all the different games, and you simulate all the outcomes. This one is just one minus uh, this number because one team's going to win, one team's going to lose. Uh, we're not s saying that there's going to be any ties, so that's the way it has to be. So once we simulate all those, then we calculate for all those simulations how many wins that team would have at the end. So we do that by going to the current settings and grabbing their win totals up to that point. And then also summing up uh, the wins for the rest of the simulated season. So here in this row, uh, who's manning the ship would have had an additional win in addition to their six wins here. So that gives them seven. So it just uses the sum if to look up who's manning the ship uh, in this column and return the value there and there and sum them up. So it sums up over the thousand simulations how many wins they get in each one of them. And then we take that and we add the tiebreaker um, from this page. Um, so if teams have the same number of wins, then it'll tell me that uh, let's show one that has the same number of wins here. So who's manning the ship and G money both have the same number of wins, but G money must have more points than who's manning the ship because they have slightly higher uh, win total with the tiebreaker. So yeah, 
G money indeed has a little bit higher than who's manning the ship. So in this case, uh, G money would make the playoffs over who's manning the ship or be ranked higher, et cetera, when it, you choose for playoffs. So that's how that, you do that with the tiebreaker. And then we've got who's projected to make the playoffs. And you'll see uh, we just use the percent rank function. And then I go over uh, this column of wins with tiebreaker. Uh, and then we go if that's greater than or equal to 50%. Uh, so 50% of the teams in this league make the playoffs. That's why I chose the 0.5. Uh, if that's the case, then 1. Uh, you put a 1, which means they made the playoffs. If not, then you put a 0, which means they didn't make the playoffs. So then we've simulated all the playoffs, uh, teams making the playoffs. And then we can just summarize those results. So you can see I calculated uh, the number of times that the teams make the playoffs. So like who's manning the ship made it 72% of the time. Um, looks like Davenport Credenza's uh, had enough wins uh, that they're always going to make it with only two weeks remaining. And you can also see uh, I've calculated uh, how many times they've won, you know, six, seven, or eight games. So you can see their win distributions, etc. And also I just set up a graph to kind of summarize that same data that's up there. So if we went to who's manning the ship, you can see uh, this is the distribution of wins. Uh, it'll be a little bit more interesting if you had more games to simulate at the end of the season. Also you can see uh, what's their seeding in the playoffs or if they didn't make the playoffs and what's the chances of different things. So for this you just use the count if um, look in schedule and results and you go to E2 which is the number up here so you just count the number of times uh, in this wins table in which they had uh, that specific number of wins all right so that's how I did a fantasy football simulation in Excel um, if you guys are interested in that, uh, go ahead and put some comments. Uh, say how maybe it could be improved or what needs to be added. But I hope you guys liked it. Thank you very much.